I have a fresh Arduino window open. I've deleted the default uh, setup and um, loops that are going to run for this. And I'm going to paste in the code I copied from the top TechBoy website that describes how to dim an LED. Um, again, I want to point out this first section. These are actually declaring variables that are going to be used later on in the code. So integer is telling um, the Arduino to store a number. And so an integer value um, could be anywhere from minus 2 to the 15th to plus 2 to the 15th approximately um, because we have a 16-bit chip. Uh, the first one declared pot pin. This is value A0. Um, this, is mean, this means we're going to call up analog pin A0, the first of our uh, six possible analog pins on the board. Uh, integer LED pin 9, we're basically saying LED pin, whenever this comes up in code, this treat this as 9. So it would be the same if I replace this with 9, but I want to be able, if I wanted to change this on the fly um, later on without having to go change it every single place, it's nice to put this up here. So that's why you would do this. If I wanted to choose a different analog pin, I could say A1, and that would change it everywhere else. Um, we are also creating things that will take on integer values, but they don't have a value yet. And so read value, this is the value that's going to come from the potentiometer. We need a place to put that number that gets read off. And then the write value as well, that's the one that we will write to the LED. Then we have our setup, we're specifying that the pin mode for the input pin um, the analog zero pin is going to be, that's going to be an input. Um, then pin mode for LED pin, pin nine is going to be an output. And we're using pin nine because it is one of the pins that can do a pulse width modulation. Um, and then last, uh, what's happening is the serial port is actually being turned on so that we can, when we start running it, we can actually open the serial monitor and see what values are being read from the potentiometer. Um, during the analog to digital conversion. Last, the void loop, the part that runs indefinitely until you kill power to the board. So we're reading the value from the analog A0 pin, so analog read, what is the value? It's taking whatever um, minimum and maximum voltage that are possible uh, to read by that pin and dividing it into 1023 possibilities and zero. Write value what this is doing is this is taking the read value and then crunching it down into a scaled amount that is no longer, you can't have a maximum of 1023 on the LED output pin. Your maximum can only be 255. So the input, um, the analog input into the Arduino board is a 10 bit uh, analog to digital converter, meaning it can take 2 to the 10 minus 1, but the output is a is an 8-bit digital to analog converter, and that is um, only 2 to the 8th minus 1 possibilities. So we got to map all the values from here to these values here. Um, the And then we're adding uh, decimals here uh, so that we can run some fractions. These aren't exactly integers. Analog write is going to take whatever the read value is and then send that to LED pin, um, that's the pin 9, and it'll essentially make that pin flash in a certain way to mimic dimming. Um, the pulse width modulation happens pretty quickly for pins 9, 10, and 11. Um, if I, I have to look this up, but I believe it's around 900 something hertz. That's how fast the, uh, the square wave is oscillating and then you're controlling what the duty cycle is. For the other analog or the pulse width modulation pins 3, 5, and 6, I think it's more like 490 uh, hertz. I'll have to look that up and put some references in the comments for this video. And then the serial monitor is also going to print the value. So you have serial print. You are writing a value of it's going to put a string of text into it, and then it'll write the value. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to verify this code. Actually, I have to save it first to something. So I'm going to call this LED dimmer. I've already saved it. Yeah, let's save it as that one. Yes, I do want to replace it. And then I'm going to verify my code. Um, again, you can't verify until you've actually saved it. And then now that I know it's done compiling and there's no errors, I can send it to my board 
before I send it to my board, I want to make sure I've selected the right board. So the board that we're using is an Arduino Uno. Uno. Um, and then the port, we have to pick the appropriate port. On Windows machines, it'll be some kind of COM port that's listed here. Um, it'll detect that it's an Arduino Uno. On Mac, it should say something like USB modem or USB serial, uh, but you're not going to use, sometimes Bluetooth ports come up there. So you want to use a USB, and then it might say USB modem or USB serial. So I know I picked that. I can press upload to my board, and it's uploading. And now I know it's uploading. And now I'm going to go to serial monitor. And it's going to tell me what I am, what kind of value I am writing. Um, this might not be showing, so I'm going to stop this video for a second and start uh, another clip. Here is the serial monitor. It is telling me I am writing a value of 255. This means I'm sending the maximum possible voltage to that LED. I can change my potentiometer and start turning it. And then what happens is it starts shrinking down. Anytime I saw a zero value is because the potentiometer wiggled as I was turning it because it's not the easiest potentiometer to put into this breadboard. So the serial monitor is constantly pinging uh, what the board is doing. And I can, again, change these values. And these are the values that are actually getting written um, to the, to the um, LED uh, pin to make it a certain brightness. Um, and again, that's through the magic of this pulse width modulation. Here is the potentiometer on the board connected to the Arduino board. The LED coming from the pin 9 uh, pulse width modulated pin. You can see the blue wire here is what's coming back into the analog zero pin on the analog in on the Arduino. So this is the same circuits that's laid out um, from the same website that produced the code that we're using for this. And I can turn this potentiometer and the LED brightens and it dims. Um, I know this potentiometer is kind of tricky to put in. Um, you have to make sure that you put it in straight. I know the contacts are kind of finicky. You can even see here that it kind of fluctuates as I turn it. Um, the potentiometer is the only one I know that's in the kit, so we'll focus on using some other stuff after this instead of using the potentiometer to give ranges of values. Um, you may notice that there's some flickering that's going on over here. That's because the ambient lighting I'm using is also pulse width modulated, and it's running at a different frequency than what the Arduino is. Um, it's kind of dimmed, and so you see there there is a duty cycle going on. And we're looking at a beat frequency between the pulse width modulated frequency of the ambient lighting and the frame rate of the video. So pulse width modulated lighting is a bunch of flickering lighting and in order to dim LEDs, which are increasingly becoming our own ambient lighting, we are seeing interesting flickering patterns when we try to record stuff, especially at high frame rates. And we are really surrounded by a bunch of flashing lights, not really dimmed lights. There's one more piece on here that I will explain in a separate video about the push buttons that come with the kit.